All right, welcome back to Morning Express, and it's time for The Way It Is. And a quick reintroduction of the guests that we have this morning, and we have Honorable Richard Onyonka, who is a member of parliament for Kitutu Churches South. We also have Ambrose Weda, who's a lawyer, and uh, Michael Agwanda, who is a governance consultant. And, well... Let's dig in straight into the way it is. Now, the leader of majority in the National Assembly, Adam Dwale, has confirmed the special seating where members will deliberate on the president's memoranda of finance bill. Dwale is calling on Kenyans to be patient until the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, reads the president's message when the House reconvenes. But even with Dwale's call for members of parliament from both sides of the political divide appears set for a showdown on the floor of the House. Some are already uh, proposing alter alternative measures to cushion Kenyans. Let's listen in. Watu wengi hapa weshimiwa zangu, wanafikiria kwamba tunapokea mshara mwingi. Let us be honest to tell our people how much we earn. We members of parliament, we have no house allowance. We have no house allowance. Na hivi siku ya jumaine tutakuwa tunajadili katika bunge Mimi naomba kwa natuwe kwa mba tuketi pamoja na ee pale siku za beli Ni aturekebisha hile bili yote kwa pamoja kabisa Tuangalie wese ya serikali That bill as you have sent it we are going to send it back to you in, in the state house And whether you sign it or not it will become law We are saying zero application of VAT on petroleum products because it will affect the cost of living. Hii maneno ya VAT kuna mambo mengi sana tunaweza ongezea VAT. VAT. Kuna ile chakula inatoka nje kama ni wakulima wetu ambao wako na mayai tunasikia mayai inatoka Uganda inauzwa Kenya kwa bei rahisi. Kwa nini tusifanye tax kwa hizo vitu ambazo zinatoka nje zinakuja kwenye nchi? On uh, Tuesday we have called for a special session of the house and uh, Two items are on the order paper. The, president, the, the speaker will read the message of the president at 2.30 based on the memoranda the president has returned to the House in accordance with Article 115 of the Constitution. So once the speaker reads the message, then we will know what that memoranda contains. The second thing that I will do that afternoon is I will table the supplementary appropriation uh, estimates concerning the various cuts that will be done in order to balance the budget. It is the responsibility of the National Assembly in conformity with the PFM Act to have a balanced budget. So until those two documents, until the Speaker reads his message from the President, until I table the, the supplementary appropriation estimate from the National Treasury, anything else is here, see. And there is no uh, 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 cuts on CDF. I want to confirm that. All right, let me start with you, Honorable Onyonka, and uh, the National Assembly Majority Leader there, asking Kenyans to be patient for tomorrow for the bill to be read, and after that, uh, we wait and see. What is it that Kenyans should be expecting to come out of this special sitting? I, <clears throat> I will tell you this. Um, I have seen what uh, Majority Leader Honorable Duale has said uh, he should brace himself for a big disappointment because members of parliament, and you've, you've been seeing what over this weekend, what most of them have actually said. Members of parliament have realized that we have been underperforming. We have realized that uh, we have never quite understood that we have three arms of government, that the executive, yes, is there, and uh, we, uh, the legislature and the judiciary, all these arms have got responsibilities, and that is how you check each other to make sure that the ship is steered very clear and well. And what I can tell you is that as you sit with members of parliament as of Saturday, yesterday, and even today, because for me, I think I'll be going to parliament, and most of them are saying, come back, let's meet, let's meet. Whether you're going to have parliamentary group meetings by the parties, those are inconsequential. Members have decided that we are going to take a common position. We don't want the VAT. Mm -hmm. we, we accept also that there are certain cuts which we need, even the ones which are affecting us. For example, we are being very honest. I saw yesterday Moses Kuria, of all people, and he's in Jubilee. He was saying, let members of parliament begin to look at ourselves inwardly and say, where do we need to cut? 
And I'm saying, let us begin with us stopping these nonsensical trips that we are making abroad. I mean, people are traveling to Europe as if we are going on holidays. Correct. We are and spending 9 billion shillings a year to travel. Mm -hmm. What are we going and, to do and, and based on the budget that you members of parliament passed, yes. 70 billion is being raised from the VAT or is to be raised from the VAT, yes. which of course is going to mean that there's going to be a deficit. And also the question that many are asking, you need two thirds yes. for this bill, or, or rather for the rejection of the president's uh, proposal. Yes. Do you see members of parliament coming together to have that done? Because again, uh, Jubilee has, has already announced that they're going to be having their meeting and possibly whipping their members of parliament towards a certain direction to you, support the president. If you look at our, at our WhatsApp group, we are now at 227. That was from yesterday at 8 in the morning until now. The only uh, the, the, the number, we actually need an extra about 45 members of parliament. The numbers we have. So you see yourselves getting oh, yeah. the two-thirds? We are uh, getting the two-thirds, yes. You're getting the two-thirds. Yes. All right, Michael Aguanda, what is it that you think Kenyans should expect from members of parliament tomorrow? I think for the first time, Kenyans want to see the parliamentarians do what they are supposed to do, and that is to represent the people and to speak on behalf of the people. And in this case, Kenyans actually from all corners of this country, whether it is in the bucket of the president or the deputy president or even the executive, the ministers and the permanent secretaries, everybody is saying that when fuel goes up, up to the last person, the poorest of the poorest in this, in this country that uses kerosene and that's what it lights, it gets light from, uh, I was saying it's, got, it's too expensive. It should be zero rated. It should not have any tax on it. Already Kenyans are hugely taxed. And I think they're looking up to the members of parliament to stamp the authority for the first time in the last 60, I mean, six, uh, six years reign of President Uhuru Kenyatta. I think they have always been with the executive. It is high time that the executive <coughs> knows that even parliamentarians have a responsibility and they're also filling a pinch. Let me tell you, these guys drive guzzlers and now the guzzlers have increased. The cost of driving those guzzlers have increased and people think that they have a lot of money. Members of parliament really don't have a lot of money. If you consider what they have to spend on the ground and how much they have to please the electorates with every weekend, they have no money. And for that reason, I really think, and I'm hopeful that members of parliament will tell the executive for the first time in six years that enough is enough. We want to champion the interests of the people and not necessarily the interests of the executive that often than not is going into <coughs> people's pockets through mm. corruption, and that's what we need to find. All right, Ambrose Sweda, do you see the members of parliament coming together given that uh, the Jubilee enjoys a majority? I expect, uh, look at the way they reacted when uh, there was a proposal to remove the cap on interest rates. Yeah. They came together and said no. But I expect the Jubilee bigwigs led by the president to shake Kidogo, to thumb his feet and threaten a few of them. So it depends with how many in the Jubilee have the, 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 the thoracos to, to, to stand up and say, Your Excellency, this one is with the people. So we ourselves, we know the president will do his party, will use his authority, will use influence so that they do not get the two thirds. The two thirds is a higher threshold. But we, I as well, am appealing to the members of parliament, even if you do not get the two thirds majority, get down to history that this. 16%, 8% you stood against it. Otherwise, history is watching. I know the president will do his part so that he's not embarrassed by parliament. Some MPs will uh, be in the middle so that they are paid something. Some will stand up and say no. History will have to judge the three categories. How they handle this. Yes. And let's come now to proposals. And Honorable Onyonka, yes. uh, what proposals are members of parliament putting on the table? Because we have a deficit of 70 billion, True. which was passed, and uh, it was expected that that 70 billion would be coming from the 16% uh, VAT. Thank you. So, what proposals are on the table to ensure that uh, we still manage to move on as a country? We um, there are about uh, 12 items that members of parliament have been discussing and in general terms we seem to be agreeing. Item number one, we want uh, Speaker Muturi, uh, we are going to give him a memorandum by tomorrow asking him that parliament and if, if need be, 
if need be. We are also asking the, the, the budget lady, um, I forget her name, and uh, forgive me, the money that is going to the county governments which she has been releasing for transport. Let us take austerity measures which make sense. And what we are saying is, members of parliament, members of the county assemblies, the speakers and the governors, the governor can travel maybe once a month. In a year, that would be 12 times, all right? And if the governor is going to travel, normally the ticket wouldn't cost more than a million shillings. Let's assume his ticket on per diem is going to be 12, 2 million. That is about 25 million shillings a year. We don't have to spend the money that we are spending right now making trips abroad as if there's anything serious. But, but that, that is a good uh, proposal. But our members of parliament, our governors, our county assembly representatives willing uh, to take that? Because at the end of the day, when you yes. talk about per diem, when you yes. talk about that travel, when you talk about benchmarking exercises, yes. we have learned in this country that those are not really to the benefit of the Mwananchi, but to the individuals. What we're saying is, yes, we've been beneficiaries of the travels. Yes, we've been the ones who are getting the, 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 the per diems and all that. But we are the ones who have been given the responsibility of coming up with the budgetary allocations in the country known as Kenya. So what we are saying as members of parliament is that we are asking our colleagues that it is a responsibility we must take. Number two, the issues, I'll give you an example. Ambrose, we spend more money in the Kenyan military than Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi put together and, and Ethiopia. And we are not at war. Mm -hmm. We spent close to 8 billion U.S. dollars. We now need the military to be honest with us so that we can cut. We expect the military to at least give us, we want every ministry to give us 10% mm. of the money which they were allocated on the higher threshold. The ceilings which were increased, we want those ceilings to come down. Are you with me? Yes. We, want, we don't want education to be touched for the simple reason that we want the teachers to be because there was uh, the agreement which was signed the cbs must be honored we don't want teachers to go on strike but why are we allocating money for teaching people ict and capacity <coughs> building five billion yeah that's a lot of money, it's which, a lot of which, money. which is unnecessary michael aguanda do you see this happening because uh, definitely uh, there are those who would want to basically dance to the tune of the president and like i mentioned earlier my uh, jubilee does have a majority i totally agree but I, i'm so elated today to sit with honorable nyonka here and to hear what and i believe that is not just speaking for himself and his constituents but it's also speaking on behalf of the other members of parliament out there and if this is the thinking that we will be seeing in the next few years perhaps this country will go to the right direction mike what has been happening in this country is the adjustment and uh, the the budgets that are located to very many organizations not organizations but ministries in this country every financial year the increment has been in the interest of the grabbers and the looters of this country in other words let's give pipeline x billion yes. and make sure yes. that oh about nine billion will come back to our pocket that's what is happening let's give nys that was at one point about eight Eight, uh, 8 billion, and it was increased up to about 20 26, billion, 26, 26 billion. billion. And the question was, why the increment? The huge and then increment. Suddenly you realize, oh, N, uh, NYS, uh, you know, corruption one and so NYS corruption two. You can see that it was consistent. strategically yeah. placed there so that it could be taken back by the power, the, uh, the powers of the day. You can see that. And you can see even Ministry of Health money coming from abroad. And you know, this money is being put here. It's supposed to be implemented. Oh, but you know, Oh, said four billion suddenly lost out of this. You think they didn't know that we had just put another ten billion in Ministry of Health, another uh, say sixteen billion in NYS. Why? Why the sudden increment of the budget? And yet, even their budget alone, perhaps we're reading about eight to nine billion. The what we are saying as Kulana a country, Kulalu. the Kulana Gulalu, uh, you know, irrigation, nineteen uh, billion. We are talking about no nineteen maze. billion, and the only. <laughs> 
uh, you know what they've got, uh, Mike? They've got only 400 bags. bags of I tabulated <laughs> that 400,000 bags at a cost of the investment that was there. It was coming to 175,000 per, per bag. Per bag. I which is absolutely it. ridiculous. So <laughs> Honorable Onyonka, would you agree then that members of parliament have given us a raw deal so far? Because really, yes, really yeah, they me, are me, our representatives. Very, and with very, those figures... I'll be very honest with you. Yes and no. Y yes, from the perspective that one of the things that has happened in the current parliament, and many, many members of the public may, know, may not know this, we have very young, very new members of parliament who got elected and have come in into the house, and they've been there for about the last one year. It takes a little bit of time to get your way around, to get your way around, to get to understand, to begin to see what the public mood is, to begin to understand what the public expects of you. So, in a way, <clears throat> I don't blame the members of parliament. Where I blame the members of parliament is that we have been um, handling ourselves casually. We have not actually even understood and interpreted what our role is as members of parliament, and I think slowly. If you, if you listen to members of parliament in the House, even when you listen to what uh, the members were discussing um, on, on TV, uh, the meetings they had over the weekend, you would see that members are beginning to discuss really critical issues. Critical and, issues. And, and also now we have found ourselves to be vulnerable. Members of parliament are realizing that the public is becoming very sensitive whether it's on social media, whether it's in real, real meetings, whether it is uh, a member of parliament going to his village and, and meeting the public. The public is now beginning to ask us to become accountable. So we are very worried about our performance, and I think it is important that the public keeps putting us in check because we are the people's representative. Okay, uh, whether do you believe that there is an awakening of the members of parliament, or is this because of uh, maybe trying to get popular with this, uh, you know, um, uh, tax, uh, or rather the austerity measures brought in by the president, especially because it touches on some of the things that the members of parliament would want retained, for example, the CDF. Yes, I, I think uh, I would not blame the members of parliament. The reason is uh, you get what you want. You get what you vote for. When we vote for people based on party, based on uh, tribe, tribe uh, and uh, you, you say six Ps, then eventually you get six Ps. So when we get charlatans and vultures of reaction in parliament, people who do not scrutinize the budget, they can't scrutinize. They don't even know how to scrutinize it. They are not there to scrutinize it. We end up with this. Why do I say so? This budget itself is not an economic, was not an economic budget. It was a political budget. Why? You slash money from the judiciary, but you allocate money for buying cylinders, for processing milk, for trips. Then you know that is basically voodoo economics. And it is upon the MPs to scrutinize and say, look, uh, the judiciary are complaining about just additional 3, 4 billion. billion yeah. This 1.5 billion cylinders, remove it. Even if there's handshake, we will shake our hands with other things. This thing of processing milk, remove this one. This one of ICT, or whatever, remove whatever. It. Remove it. Laptops, if uh, people are going to die before, remove it. Irrigation, that is irrigation. Remove. This is the work of the members of parliament. But if we elect them on the basis that some are going to strip naked, if Uru says what, some are going to pour water on others, some are removing their pants. If you elect them and you cheer them when they come home because they removed their pants, then you know that the devil is real and he is in that parliament. <laughs> it is upon Kenyans. If you are going to lift this burden off your head, then you are going to say, I want a member of parliament. I want you to go there to represent me. When they bring a budget, read it, even if the president is your brother. Read it. If the president does not know the cost of bread is 50 shillings and not a thousand, tell him. That is when you love him so that he also gets a good direction. Those of us in Jubilee, I am in Jubilee. We love the president so much. We must tell him the truth. We must tell him this thing on fuel is hurting his very people in Uchaweri, in Kombewa, in where, yes. in where, and therefore let us relocate funds from elsewhere but leave fuel alone. Those who will come and say, I love the president so much that whatever he says, I'll say, Mr. President, beat me again. Those are the ones who hate the president. <laughs> the Bible says, he who does not discipline his child hates the child. He who does not correct his friend hates the friend. All right, we love the president. 
this 68% should go. Honorable Onyonka, there are yes. those who say that we are where we are because of the handshake. In effect, we lost the opposition's voice. Do you believe or do you agree with that? I, I don't. The, the, the handshake came in because of the political reasons, mm -hmm. which... which and, and, and even based on what Weda has said, that yes. this is a political budget. Yes, it is. That could be an indication that the handshake also, you know, came in with some promises possibly that are now, you know, catching up with us. That is true. That is very, very true. Because there are certain allocations which have been made into the budget, I believe, which were accommodating issues of the, of the, handshake. Of the handshake. But the true reality about this budget are that the handshake did not play a major role in terms of, 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 um, of being careless about whether we are prudent in the, in the management of the issues of the current budget or not. Mm. According to me, the, the handshake is really a matter that is about the Kenyan politics. <coughs> but I, I don't believe that the handshake has either improved the economics of the country or made sure that we are operating from a negative aspect. So my thinking, uh, from where I sit right now, I believe that the handshake was a good idea. It is true that uh, Prime Minister Raila has not been talking and raising issues about, except yesterday, I think day before yesterday, where he said he agrees with uh, President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta agreeing to bring the VAT to 8%. I think for me, that is the best he can do. But otherwise, I can assure you, when you look at the behavior of the members of parliament today and tomorrow and until Thursday, yes, some of them are in ODM, some are in uh, Jubilee, some of us are in the other smaller political parties, but I can assure you, we are not going to look and listen at the issues affecting this country and assuming that yes, because we want the handshake to succeed, mm. then we will not criticize the president. What we want to do is raise issues with the ex executive. Uh, we want to uh, explain to Uhuru Kenyatta that we respect him mm. and, and we have a lot of regard for him. But there are certain things which I think from now that if as members of parliament we realize that these things are not going the right way, we will raise them mm -hmm. and it's for him to look at and them. And I think it's important to also note and highlight the fact that the handshake does not mean one does not disagree with the president. Yes. yes. Uh, but rather it was just to bring in peace and uh, stability in exactly, the country. Exactly, for, for the country to move on. Exactly, yes. for the country to move on. Michael Aguanda, your thoughts on whether the handshake is what has got us to where we are? Because again, looking at this budget, uh, there are certain allocations that would possibly have been part of a negotiation. Again, remember Remember, the, the handshake was uh, filled with a lot of mystery as to what exactly it was. Could this be, it be coming to the fore? I totally disagree. I think the handshake was in the interest of bringing tranquility <coughs> and peace in this country that we totally did not have owing to a very volatile election, uh, Supreme Court annulling the presidential election, and then uh, the... <coughs> The, the, the judiciary being threatened to be dealt with. And, uh, and, and then, you, Mike, uh, I've said before, uh, just during that process, it was very difficult to go to Central if you came from Nyanza. It was very difficult to come from Central <coughs> and go to Nyanza area and do business, do anything. Now, the handshake to me uh, made Kenya be Kenya again. In other words, it gave us the freedom again to travel and do business and walk freely in this country. Something was, that was being curtailed by the negative uh, politics that was emit, emanating from the um, from the volatile election. Now, as to whether it has helped this economy or not, my points are very clear. It is unfortunate that President Raila shook hand with President. I mean, uh, Honorable Raila Molodinga shook hand with President Uhuru Kenyatta. Why do I say so? It is only Raila that if he spoke about any corruption in this country, the country will go wild because they had <laughs> trusted him. They had trusted his sources of, 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 of information. They had known that if he spoke about something like NYS, then indeed people stole. Exists. And if everything that he said about corruption in this country, people took it so seriously. My disappointment with this is now we have nobody in the caliber of Raila Molotinga to come out and say, oh, you've stolen from Ministry of Health. You've stolen from Kenya pipeline and then the country can start expecting some investigation. Now when you do not have that authority, that big voice that the Kenyans will listen to, then it will be another time of looting this country through corruption. 
It will be another time of stealing because they know that there is no stronger voice. I'm seeing Honorable um, Salem Davadi coming out and starting to question some expenditures and stuff like that. But it's not rich where Raila was. That when he mentioned something, tomorrow it will be the headline. And when it's in the headline, the investigation and people will start making noise. How I hope that even though he shook hand with President Uru Kenyatta, that he will still have his role <laughs> of saying you've stolen here yeah. so that Kenyans can know that there's still theft in this country and this will be stopped. And also and that there's somebody <laughs> to hold them accountable. Now, gentlemen, exactly. we're running out of time and I need your closing comments on this. And let me start with you, Weda, yes. on possibly what we should expect. And uh, once the, if, if, if the members of parliament manage to raise the two-thirds yes. that will send or rather will make sure that this uh, VAT is not imposed, yes. this means that it will come back in another two years. Are we yes. just postponing our pain? No, I, I, think, I think postponing it uh, is on the basis that uh, we live by hope. Our Lord, the creator of all of us, says you should never miss three things, faith, hope, and love. So we hope that today is tough, but in another two years we shall have improved where we can then afford. Although there are certain things that will need to be put in place for that hope yes. to be actualized in the yes. two years it's, that we're able to do this. this uh, the creator of everything has given us oil. Oil. But he left management for us. We have just found it difficult talking to the basic Turkanas there, just to tell them, this oil, we are doing this. We have just found it difficult to refine our oil here in Mombasa. We have just found it difficult to uh, put a pipeline so that we can transport this oil in a cheaper way. You know when you transport oil from by Turkana road. to Mombasa by road, you are just mad. It's just a voodoo way of looking <laughs> at things. So we are saying that by that time, we <coughs> wakened parliament and the president seeking a legacy that we will name our grandchildren after him, then things would have worked well. If we are rich, we don't mind 30% VAT on, 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 on oil. But if we are poor the way we are now, even 1% is killing. It's That's killing why us. we are saying two years is okay if things are improving. But now we are down, Mr. President. Uh, Honorable uh, Onyonka, your closing comments. My few comments are that number one I think with all due respect the president should raise himself uh, that members of parliament we are determined uh, completely to make sure that we actually have him remove <coughs> the VAT we are going to give him options the options are available um, Kenya is a country which has got a budget of 1 trillion shillings collectible revenue is at 840 billion is enough money that can you can move this and that and and you can He'll achieve, able to achieve the same goals finally i want to say this our country has enough resources we are misappropriating the resources mismanaging them and misplanning on them we must be a country that takes responsibility and we need to have the people who are in the treasury begin to rethink all mps are not inconsequential and shallow-minded and they're not educated no some of us have been to school some of us have studied what treasury guys do we have got doctors we have got lawyers we are willing to sit with them and we will tell them what is reasonable we will do but let us not punish the ordinary kenyans for somebody who's earning um uh, 12 or 13 thousand shillings a month and is a manual casual laborer and you are going now to increase their fare from 200 shillings a day to 400 that's it. Michael Agwanda. As I conclude, World Bank is saying that corruption is killing Kenya and it is actually interfering with our physical uh, development as a country. Um, IMF is actually saying oh, you need to have some rules and regulations before we give you money. China is suddenly saying we can't give you grants, we will have to give you some loans. In other words, the international community is saying, hey, look, here, uh, the Eurobond is actually saying you might not get what you've been getting and we might also fasten uh, the period under which you need to pay your loans. Uh, I think the Treasury and the President need to come to a realization that we better be specific on what we want, not this astrono astrono astronomical, astronomical, astronomical mm. budget which we cannot fund. Why do we want to have a huge budget while what we collect by KRA is maybe a half of our budget. We better be very specific and say this is who we are, this is what we can afford. 
let's cut expenditure. And if we get a partner that is able to get into a private partnership with us, let's go that direction. Instead of building and building and then leaving that debt, not for the people that are working today, but for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Why do we want to put this country, mortgage this country, the other day I just saw on uh, YouTube on Zambia, a uh, Chinese uh, had come and blocked a road. And a gentleman was saying, look, are we bewitched as a country? Maybe that's what we need to ask this country. Are we bewitched that we can find 5,000 Chinese working on the railway line? I, I mean, SGR and things that Kenyans can do. Why must they bring Chinese and yet Kenyans are reading in, in, in English so that we do not understand what this uh, SGR is all about. Kenyans have run railway line here before. We can run the SGR. We just need to have those 5,000 people be repatriated back so that Kenyans can get, get, to job, get to jobs in SGR. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to wind up there because of time. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. That is uh, Honorable Richard Onyonka, who is a member of parliament for Kitutu Chache South. We also have Michael Aguanda, who is a governance consultant, and Ambrose Weda, who is a lawyer. Thank you for joining us. And that's the way it is. It's now 28